President Trump's attorneys are asking for a much narrower protective order from the special counsel's office. They're arguing that only genuinely sensitive material should be f shielded from public view. In their filing, they also accuse President Biden of doing the same thing on social media. Now, let's get to another legal case hanging over the former president. CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian joins us now from Atlanta, where new state charges could be looming for former President Trump. Hey, Nicole, good to see you. Uh, I'm glad that you're here to break this all down because uh, all of these investigations can get kind of confusing here. Um, but what exactly are we expecting, at least, in the charges against Trump in Georgia? Well, I think it's a little premature to speculate just yet in the sense that, A, we don't even have a charging decision. We do know we are nearing that window in the sense that you can probably see behind me there are barricades that have been set up. And while there were some set up last week, now the street outside of the courthouse is officially closed down. So reading all of these tea leaves in terms of the increased and enhanced security and the declining foot traffic within the courthouse, that does suggest that we are getting closer to this period where we expect District Attorney Fonnie Willis to present her evidence uh, to one of two grand juries. And we expect that could happen really in a matter of days, which is why you're seeing some of that stepped up security behind me. And of course, this all stems from the 2020 election. And this is an investigation that has spawned some two and a half years, really diving deep into whether or not there was election interference here in the state of Georgia. Of course, we know that the former president had that call, that now infamous call with Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger asking him to find the votes. But this case runs much deeper than that. It also delves into this issue of false electors. It delves into potential breaches into voting equipment in uh, rural Georgia County. Uh, so this remains a sprawling case. Uh, we know that the special purpose grand jury that was investigating all of this uh, both last year and into the beginning part of this year did suggest that some of the witnesses may have committed perjury. So that's a one potential avenue. There has been a lot of speculation uh, that the district attorney could move forward with uh, racketeering charges because she has done that in the past with big, sprawling cases. So it remains to be seen. But, Caitlin, what we do know is that a decision is looming and looming soon. And we're hearing also that former the former lieutenant governor uh, has received a subpoena um, in this inquiry. What does that tell us? Well, it's significant because uh, he is one of several individuals that has now been called to appear before the grand jury here in Fulton County. Uh, in addition to the lieutenant governor, for instance, we know that an independent journalist has also been called to testify who uh, stumbled into these uh, fake electors as they were meeting in the Georgia State Capitol at the end of 2020. You know, in terms of the lieutenant governor, of course, uh, his testimony could be uh, significant in the sense that, uh, you know, you'll recall that the former president really mounted this pressure campaign allegedly here in Georgia, not only calling uh, the secretary of state, but also calling out the state's governor and other elected officials. And so uh, to that extent, uh, his testimony could uh, prove valuable and be a part of the district attorney's presentation, although it's worth pointing out that the uh, former lieutenant governor has been quite critical of of the former president and remain so. Indeed. Well, so much for a slow news August. Nicole Killian, I know you'll be covering all of this for us down in Georgia, and we'll see what unfolds there. Thank you for your time and reporting.